Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about properties of determinants. So in section 6.3.1, we covered the first part of these properties and uh, the rest of them will be in future. Okay, theorem 6.3.1. Let A be an n by n matrix. The first property says if A has a zero row or a zero column, then the determinant of A is zero. Part uh, before before covering part B, let's let's see what is the proof for this. Well, the proof is very simple. As assume you have a row with all the entries zero, then if you apply the cofactor expansion along that row, since all these entries are zero, then the whole cofactor expansion becomes zero. That's why the determinant is zero. B, if A has two identical rows or two identical columns, then again, the determinant of A is zero. Let's see what's the reason. Assume that row I and row J are identical. So let me write, we have a bunch of rows and all of a sudden we have row I with these entries. So this is row I. And then I'm assuming that this guy is row J. However, since row I and row J are identical, I would like to write same entries for both. Now, if you remember from the previous video, if we apply the third type row operation, then the determinant will be unchanged. So this becomes AI1, AI2, a, I, N, and then row J becomes zero, okay? And now let's look at the property A in part A. If you have a row with all entries zero, then the whole determinant is zero. So that's the reason for property in part B. Okay, now the property in part C wants to discuss what happens if you multiply a scalar to a matrix or what is the effect of a, a scalar product when you apply the determinant. Well, the answer is you pull out K, however, you have to raise it to power N. What is N? Number of rows. Or columns because A is a square matrix. Okay, don't forget that. And let's see the proof uh, for only three by three matrices because the general case is very similar. So let's evaluate the terminal of K A where A is A11, A12, and keep going. So first, uh, again, by uh, the previous uh, video that we discussed, when you do the second, first type row operation, or second type, I mean multiplying a scalar, here we can pull out k from row one. And then, uh, sorry, one, two, one, three, but the rest of the rows stays the same. Okay. Now, pull out the scalar k from second row, but we already have one copy. So k times k, k squared, a11, a12, a13, a21, a22, a23, and then ka31, ka32, K A three three. And then we repeat the argument 
for the third row, we get k cubed. Then the determinant of just a. a31, a32, a33. That is just k cubed to determine of a. Good. So you see, if you have a larger matrix, 4x4, four 5x4, four, four, just a similar discussion would be applied. Okay, let's cover an example. Example 6.3.1. Evaluate the following determinant. Okay, well, of course, you can do cofactor co expansion along a row or column. That's one option. The second option is, well, I can do row operation. However, be careful. You have to keep track of the effect of each operation at each step. And at the end, you end up with an REF, which is an upper triangular matrix, whose determinant is very simple. Multiplication of the entries in the main diagonal. However, sometimes when you have a large matrix, not a bad idea to scan quickly the entries. Look at this. Here, the second row, the second column, I'm sorry, and the fourth column are proportional. So, and if you remember from the uh, previous video, uh, you, you can pull out a K from a row or a column. So here, I pull out two from last column. Oh, oopsies, I'm sorry. I was supposed to pull out two. Now you see that you have two columns which are identical, yes? That's why by property right here, B, if you have two rows identical or two columns identical, then the determinant is zero. Good, uh, that's for today. And uh, goodbye until the next video.